Hey guys, my name's Count Hushman and in today's video we're going to be checking out the third generation Focusrite Scarlett 4i4 audio interface. Let's have a look. If you've watched this channel before, you might already know that before this I was using a Steinberg UR22 Mark II interface. And before my guitar actually hit the interface, I would have to run a DI box to stop my guitar from clipping. And that's because the Steinberg UR22, when using the high Z input or the instrument line within the actual interface, it didn't actually have enough headroom for my guitar and my picking. When I picked really hard, even with the gain all the way on zero, it would still clip. So to mediate that, I had to get a DI box to pad the signal before I actually hit into the interface so I wouldn't clip. So the general setup was my guitar would feed straight into this and then through an XLR cable on the back it would feed into this at the front and then the back of this would feed into my computer and that's where my guitar tone would come from. However now I'm looking to replace both of these things with just one interface. So without further ado let's unbox this and see what you get inside and see if it's worth your money and worth your time especially if you're in the predicament that I am. Before we get into it, if you guys like this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you see or hear. And if you want to see more of this stuff, definitely think about subscribing. So here it is, the Focusrite Scarlett 4i4. Now, I've heard a lot of good things about the Focusrite stuff. It seems like every second person that I ask anything about audio production, what interface are you using, most likely they're going to say it's something by Focusrite, especially in the cheaper realm of things. So I'm actually really keen to try it since it is the third generation, which does have the USB-C on the back. Focusrite claims that the USB-C actually helps with latency, so let's see if that's the case. Just quickly going onto the back of the box, you'll see that there's just like diagrams displaying each input and output on the device, as well as a little bit of info on all the included software, which I probably won't be using anyway. Out of all the dot points that are on here, the two high headroom instrument inputs to plug into your guitar bass is the one that stands out to me the most, because that is basically the whole reason why I bought this. So let's see how much this can handle. Hopefully seeing me play into this interface with my Jackson guitars with my really hard picking hand will kind of give you guys an indication of how hard you can go with this interface without running a DR box before it. This is something that I've struggled with in the past and hopefully this fixes everything. Just one bit of tape to cut, which is fantastic. And there we have it. So that's the focus right, right in there. Now, this right here I'm assuming is the USB-C cable. Yep, so it's USB-C here, and then that goes into a normal USB. So that's the USB-C there that plugs into the back of the interface, and that's the one that goes in your computer. Again, only one piece of tape, which is handy. So as you can see on the front, we have two XLR slash instrument inputs, which both have a pad. I'm hoping that the high z or the instrument line, both of them have a pad for it as well, which would be really, really handy. Um, as you can see here, we have this really, really big monitoring knob, which is really cool. Um, something that's a little bit lacking on the Steinberg one that I've got at the moment. It's a little bit, it's like almost this size and you have to really like get in there and turn it. But this is really nice and big, no stress, no worries. And then moving to the back, we have two MIDI inputs here, which is handy, as well as having four line outputs and then four line inputs. So these are for your speakers and pedals and stuff like that. And this is for like drum machines, synthesizers, all that stuff. And that's obviously where the USB-C goes into. And that's pretty much it. Very, very sleek looking, very minimalistic, which is something that I really, really enjoy. So let's crack into it. <laughs> Okay, so to test out the headroom on the high Z input or the instrument line on the Focusrite 4R4, right now we've got my Jackson Mishimesua USA guitar loaded up with bare knuckle juggernauts going straight into my tuner, which then gets fed into the Focusrite. There's no DI box in front of it or anything. This is by far the hottest guitar that I own, and when I say hottest, I mean it produces the most output, especially when I pick hard. So this is gonna be the tester. I've got OBS running as well, which is capturing the display window for the Focusrite control software, as well as the input of my guitar going into the computer. So just to give a quick overview of the Focusrite control software, it's actually really handy because as you can see here, we have the analog one and analog two input controls. And on analog one, which is what my guitar is going to over here, I have instrument line instead of just the line input. So it's taking a high Z input and I've got the pad on as well. So it's actually taking out, I think 15 dB from my signal on the guitar. Another cool trick within Focusrite control is that you can actually set the different LED colors for like good, pre-clip and clip. So at the moment I've got good and pre-clip both on green with clip on red. So I'd know for sure exactly when I'm clipping because before it used to be yellow for pre-clip, which it flashes yellow from time to time, but that's technically not me clipping. So I'm not worried about that. I just want to know when I'm clipping. 
and as you see when I turn the gain up and start playing really hard, we start to go into a little bit of red, push it even more, basically always clipping. So I think around here is a good spot. Always in the green and that's exactly what we want. As you can see here on the analog one, which is again what my guitar is going through over here on the first input, um, you can see the actual decibel level meter. And I'm like just under zero. I don't think I'm ever actually touching it, but if I wanted to push it down a little bit more just to really make sure that I don't even go anywhere near zero dB. I can do that as well. So let's test it. I'm going to be playing a bunch of different stuff. I'm going to be playing really, really hard. As hard as I would record when I'm doing a demo, if you've already watched my YouTube channel. So without further ado, bridge pickup. Yep, volume all the way up, tone all the way up, going straight into the interface with no DR box in front of it. And I've got the pad on. The gain isn't at dead zero. It's just a little bit above zero. And if it flashes red over here around this ring, that means we're clipping. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm really, really, really beating my guitar up and it's not flashing red, which means it's not clipping, which is exactly what we want and that is fantastic. And I still have a little bit more room to turn my game down even more, so I'm definitely not clipping. And this is even handier when you have even hotter pickups than the bare knuckle juggernauts combined with a really hard picking hand, you still have that little bit of room to just turn it down even more. So in my box, this is exactly what I would want as a bedroom guitarist, especially for me where I'm doing this stuff pretty much all the time now and I have to record songs and stuff like that. I want everything to just be as like no fuss as possible. Just plug my guitar straight in. Don't have to worry about having a DR box on my desk, this and that and the other when I don't even really need it. It's not like I'm reamping guitars with ramps or anything. It's all on the computer. So having that there inbuilt within the actual interface with USB-C and everything like that is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> So this just gives me the peace of mind knowing that I'm probably never ever going to clip using this guitar which is the guitar that I use most of the time anyway and it's my hottest guitar as well so my 7 string and any other guitar that I have is not going to be clipping through this because this is definitely the hottest one, I know that for a fact. So all in all the Focusrite 4x4 is a really good interface especially if you're doing this guitar bedroom stuff. Um, if you're playing really hot guitars like this one where they produce a lot of output especially when you pick hard, this is going to handle it just fine. And anything that I'm doing on that first input, you can do it on the second input as well. I can have a pad, I can have the instrument line, I can have the air control. Air control is like a little bit of opening up the high end for like microphones and stuff like that, which I'm not really going to be using. So I'm using the pad and the instrument line on input one, and that's basically it. <laughs> And if I'm not mistaken, you don't have to get the 4i4 from Focusrite. I'm pretty sure the 2i2 has the exact same preamps within it. So I think it can withstand the same amount of like decibel level, if that makes sense. So I'm pretty sure if I plugged this exact same guitar and had the exact same setup going into a 2i2, you could still do that, which is nearly half the price of the 4i4. So if you're in the market for a new Focusrite interface and you really want to try them out, I highly recommend them. I'm actually having a really good time with them. You can see here when you start selecting, it actually pops up on the interface. So you've got red, yellow, green, blue, dark blue, pink, and then like a nude color. So that's actually really, really cool. I haven't seen that in a lot of interfaces. So it's just little things like that that go a long way. Another way you could use it is that if you didn't want to pre-clip at all, you could put the pre-clip on red so you're only flashing green when you're in the good and it will flash red for pre-clip and clip. As you can see, I'm flashing red because I am pre-clipping a little bit, but when I put it on green, technically I'm still not clipping. It's just full green all round. So yeah, hopefully you guys found this video useful and if you're in the market for a new interface and you're looking for something predominantly for guitar stuff, 
definitely check out the focus right i really really enjoy it if you guys like this video at any time please feel free to leave a like and a comment it really does help the channel out and if you want to see more of this stuff definitely think about subscribing but until next time i'll catch you guys later thank you so much for watching ciao